On October 2, 1857, Arthur Edward Waite was born in Brooklyn. In some biographies, it is mentioned that Waite was born in New York. However, Brooklyn was not incorporated into New York until 1898. By that time, Waite had long been living in the United Kingdom. Prior to that, Brooklyn was a separate city equal to New York. Confirmation of this can be found on the famous Statue of Liberty. There, in bronze, the sonnet, The New Colossus, by Emma Lazarus is cast, which includes the following lines. From her beacon hand, blows worldwide welcome her mild eyes command, the air-bridged harbor that Twin Cities frame. The cities mentioned here as Twin Cities are Brooklyn and New York, and the bridge referred to is the famous Brooklyn Bridge. In one of his letters, Wade later wrote with regret that the neighborhood where he was born no longer exists. The Brooklyn Bridge and the small park have taken its place. For Wade, the famous bridge symbolized the lost home, although Hollywood often used it in iconic scenes of returning home. To give you a better understanding of what Brooklyn looked like when Wade was born, it looks something like this. Just under a year after Arthur's birth, at the end of September, his sister Frederica was born. However, this joyous occasion was overshadowed by a terrible tragedy, bearing a striking resemblance to a Victorian poem, The Sailor's Bride. However, unlike the poem of Mary and James, it wasn't the bride, but the groom who passed away. Arthur's mother was left with two children, unmarried, and young Arthur and his sister never saw their father, Captain Charles Waite, who perished in the Atlantic. The first month of autumn would play a somber role in the future life of Arthur Edward Waite. Brooklyn in the 19th century was a respectable city. It was home to oil magnates, the founders of the pharmaceutical conglomerate Pfizer, and even one of the founders of the globally renowned Theosophical Society, lawyer William Kwan Judge. Single mothers without even an official confirmation of marriage had no place in Brooklyn. Therefore, Emma Lowell, the mother of Arthur Waite, was forced to return to Victorian England. Everything that happened had a profound impact on the poor woman, and she became a devout Catholic, as the doors of the Anglican Church were forever closed to her. Later, the symbolism of the Catholic Church would be strongly evident in Waite's works. He even renamed the card, The Popis, which alluded to the scandalous story of Joan, the only woman to occupy the papal throne, to the High Priestess. Victorian England did not welcome Arthur warmly. He changed one school after another. Being illegitimate and not of noble birth, both he and his sister became targets for both students and teachers. For instance, at the school on Upper Park Road, the headmaster stole money from her purse right in his office. Here's how William Blake described London half a century before Waite's arrival. I wander through each chartered street, near where the chartered Thames does flow, and mark in every face I meet, marks of weakness, marks of woe, in every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every ban, the mindfucked manacles I hear, how the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church appalls, and the hapless soldier's sigh, runs in blood down palace walls, but most throw midnight streets I hear, how the youthful harlots curse, blasts the newborn infant's tear, and blights with plagues the marriage hearse. By the time Waite moved, London had already begun to change, but there was still plenty of injustice and cruelty. During his school years, Wade even seriously considered becoming a priest. London at that time was a real sin city. The atmosphere of its streets was best captured in the tales of A Penny Dreadful, as recreated in the TV series of the same name. At school, Wade was engrossed in such reading material and even wrote and published his first story in this genre at the age of 12. However, this was his first and last attempt at Penny Dreadful, but it sparked his interest in mysticism. At the age of 13, Wade enrolled in St. Charles College, but was forced to almost immediately leave it to work in a law firm due to financial difficulties his mother faced. Later on, he would constantly be criticized for the lack of a formal education, but for an illegitimate child of a single mother in 19th century London, there weren't many other options. Arthur found solace after work at the law firm in writing poetry. 
When first mankind defiled the heart with crime, the gentle fairies sought a happier clime. Far, far beyond the sunset's golden gate and there await. When there were just a couple of weeks left until Wait's 17th birthday, the first month of autumn struck him again. Prior to this, September took his father, and now it took his only sister. Wait contemplated suicide but found another way to escape reality. He began to regularly visit the British Library where he read everything obsessively. At first, it was fairy tales and poems by Felicia Hemmings. Dust, to its narrow house beneath, soul, to its place on high. They that have seen thy look in death no more may fear to die. Gradually, his interests shifted towards esotericism and occultism. It was there that he discovered the works of Eliphas Levi in French, and it was at that moment that he first published his own poems. At the same time, Waite was deeply and unsuccessfully in love with Dora Lakeman. However, Dora did not reciprocate his feelings and married someone else. In despair, Waite felt as though the bright and seductive Dora, like a Lilith from the Pre-Raphaelite paintings, was born to destroy his life. However, unexpectedly, Dora's younger sister, Ada Lakeman, confessed to him that she had been in love with him all this time. Ada was the complete opposite of Dora, she was modest and straightforward. But strangely enough, if you look closely at their photographs, they resemble each other like twins. On January 7, 1888, Waite married Ada choosing the naive Eve from the twins instead of the demonic Lilith. However, Waite lovingly called Ada by a completely different name, Lacasta. The newlyweds were so financially challenged that they had to live with Waite's mother. But for the sake of their love, Lacasta was willing to make any sacrifices. Soon, they had a daughter, symbolically named Sibylla. Lacasta became her husband's true muse. He wrote one book after another. Fantasy novels like Prince Darbeam and In Search of the Golden Staircase, filled with Christian symbolism, outpaced stylistically similar works like Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia and Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings by half a century. For the lion and the lamb, a piece in fairy. The dove is in the eagle's nest. There are golden waters, rivers of waters of gold, footmarks of enchantment, wings for rainbow flight, and stars following. He translated the works of Eliphas Levi into English so successfully that his translations are still considered canonical. Finally, in 1891, he joined the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, the very order he had written poems about back in his childhood. Waite continues to work extensively, publishing a vast number of books on the history of occultism. However, in 1898, his Book of Black Magic and of Pacts is released, which proves to be fateful, despite Waite's warnings within it. It would, however, be unsafe to affirm that all persons making use of the ceremonies in the rituals would fail to obtain results. Perhaps in the majority of cases, most of such experiments made in the past were attended with results of a kind. When this book was released, a friend of Waite and a member of the Golden Dawn, Arthur Mackin, had his wife die of cancer. He was devastated, and not only delved into the study of the rituals described in the ill-fated book, but also actively began to practice them. As a result, the admission to the Orden of the Golden Dawn came to an end, and the order was split. Many blamed Waite for this and could never forgive him. In the novel, Lunar Child, Alistair Crowley described the black magician, Arthwaite, referencing weight. The man in charge of the mission of the Black Lodge was one Arthwood, a dull and inaccurate pedant without imagination or real magical perception. Like most black magicians, he tippled habitually and his capacity for inflicting damage upon others was limited by his inordinate conceit. The legendary master of horror, Lovecraft, depicted Waite as the evil sorcerer Ephraim Waite in his story, The Thing on the Doorstep. However, in his personal letters, Aleister Crowley later admitted that if it weren't for Waite, he himself would never have been able to enter the circle of the initiated. But there was some truth in the accusations. Waite did indeed drink heavily at the time, even participating in dubious rituals involving the consumption of absinthe, also known as the Green Fairy. It seems that in his soul, the demonic Dora continued to entice him. Hallucinations induced by absinthe painted pictures of a completely different reality, where Dora became his sole focus. Wade attempted to involve Dora in dark rituals, 
which is evident in their diaries and letters. However, in the end, he managed to forget his personal Lilith and plunged into the ocean of the occult, which was raging in Europe before the First World War. He became a Freemason and then was accepted into the Societas Rosicruciana in Anglia. After the final schism of the Order of the Golden Dawn, Wake created his own secret society, the Fellowship of the Rosy Cross. His period of alcoholism left him with an obsession with the Holy Grail, a topic he often discussed in the company of his friend Mackin while holding a glass of absinthe. But let's briefly return to the Golden Dawn. To progress from one level of knowledge to another, the Order's adepts had to study the Tarot Arcana. It was from this that the interest in Tarot arose for both Waite and his main adversary, Aleister Crowley. In 1910, together with the artist Pamela Coleman-Smith, Waite created a highly unusual tarot deck. While previous tarot decks lacked illustrations for the minor arcana, they produced illustrations for all 78 cards in the deck. They were aided in this endeavor by the enigmatic Sola Busca deck from the late 15th century. The Sola Busca deck is commonly referred to as tarot, but it's not quite tarot in the traditional sense. It significantly differs from all tarot decks of the same period, including the Visconti Sforza deck, the deck of Charles VI, and the Rothschild deck. All the major arcana feature real historical figures, such as Nero or Nebuchadnezzar. But what is particularly unusual is that the minor arcana are also associated with real historical characters. For example, all the sword suits are connected to Alexander the Great, who himself is the King of Swords, and the Queen is Olympias, his mother. According to Nadia Chishti Mujahid's theory, as outlined in the book, An Introduction to Western Esotericism, this deck was used for the initiation ritual of a secret society. Presumably, this society refers to the Pomponio Leto's Roman Academy. This was an early form of the brotherhood we now call the Illuminati. Supporting this theory is the fact that the deck is in excellent condition, even though it was created in 1491. This suggests that it couldn't have been used for either playing or fortune-telling, but only in very rare ceremonial occasions. Furthermore, the deck was first seen by outsiders in the 19th century when the Solo Busca family, Venetian aristocrats who had owned it for centuries, became extinct. It is known that in 1907, the British Museum displayed black and white photographs of the deck provided by its owners. In these images, Waite undoubtedly easily recognized the hidden symbols within the deck. For example, on the Three of Swords, he couldn't have missed the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Of course, he had often seen this heart pierced by swords in the Catholic Cathedral, symbolizing the sorrows of the Mother of God, and this couldn't have left his own heart untouched. Inspired by the mysticism of the Solo Busca deck, Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith infused each card with hidden symbols. The deck was first published in 1909 and quickly gained popularity, to the point that today, Tarot often specifically refers to this deck. In 1924, Lacasta passed away. Prior to that, Waite had nearly lost his daughter due to a severe case of pneumonia. After everything that happened, he wrote his best book, About the Holy Grail. It's as if he was searching for a way to bring back his beloved Lacasta. But time inexorably marched on, crushing the last hope of a miracle. He took a long time to recover from the tragedies and only remarried to Mary Broadbent Schofield after a gap of nine years. Arthur Edward Waite passed away on May 19, 1942, having previously survived the terrifying bombings of Britain ordered by Hitler. During these bombings, the original tarot cards, kept in the archive of the publisher, Ryder and Sons, were also lost. Waite previously wrote in his poem, What is life itself, but madness? What is death, but endless night? During his lifetime, he managed to publish 64 books, including several about his tarot deck. Waite's last word was in Latin for unity, which leaves behind the farewell mystery of Arthur Edward Waite, who or what he felt close to in the moment of his death.